Hey, Samin. My name is Quentin, and I'm calling from Silver Spring, Maryland. My family and I are locked away these days like everyone else, and I would love to try a Persian recipe, something simple and comforting. Thanks so much. That's a nice question. Yeah. Quentin, you're in like Persian epicenter over there in Maryland. (laughs) So there's probably a Middle Eastern grocery store you can get some basmati rice at. Mm. Um, And if you don't have basmati rice, you can start with some long grain rice and make yourself a tadig, a Persian crispy rice, which um, in the minds of many Iranians, you know, the measure of a cook is how good her tadig is. Mm. But I, I kind of have spent a while tweaking and simplifying a tadig recipe to make it really, really doable for everyone. So it is all over the internet, but I'm going to explain it so that honestly, I think if you just follow these steps, you'll be able to get it. But the difference between Persian rice and other kinds of rice that we're used to eating is that um, it's cooked twice in, in two different sort of steps. And then it also has two different textures. The rice at the bottom of the pot, which translates to tadig, bottom of the pot, becomes crispy and fried, while the rest of the rice is super fluffy, like so fluffy that it cooks up in individual grains. And in order to get that, you have to rinse your rice and get all of the starch off, as much as starch as possible needs to exit the rice Mm. before it's cooked. So my mom, for example, would soak a cup of rice per person. And Iranians eat a lot of rice, so we do it a cup per person. I think everyone else, a half a cup is plenty. So <laughs> a cup of so, rice per person is that's like three cups of cooked rice. <laughs> that is pro level rice eating. Yeah, but we like I grew up in a house where the rice was the main thing, right? And then yeah. we just garnished it with some sauce. And like the idea I had never had seen meat as the center of the plate until I worked in restaurants in mm. my twenties. Mm-hmm, I really sure. was used to rice with vegetables as the main part of my plate. Anywho, start with half a cup of rice per person. So say you're cooking for four, you can take two cups of long grain rice and um, soak them and change the water until it runs clear. So that might take three or four changes of water. My mom would soak for many hours, but if you don't have time to do that, you can just rinse it. And then it goes into a big pot of heavily salted water and you cook it until it's al dente. It really has to be still quite hard in the middle. So for every different kind of rice, that'll be, you know, or brand of basmati or whatever, it'll be slightly different, but it's anywhere from like right when the water comes back up to a boil to maybe up up to six minutes. So I'll just stand there and sort of check and drain it into a colander that I have in the sink. So you're cooking it like pasta. rinse. Yeah, just like pasta, exactly. Not like steamed rice. And then I'll rinse, 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 rinse with cold water, both to stop the cooking of the rice and to rinse away even more starch. And then I'll let that drain. And while that's draining, maybe I'll taste a couple grains of it. And if it needs more salt, I'll salt the whole batch, you know, just sort of sprinkle salt and, and toss it around. And then this is the fun part. So traditionally, um, we would use uh, like a the very traditional ancient Teflon pot. (laughs) (laughs) That's what every Iranian lady uses. But most people don't have Teflon pots. So if you have a nonstick pan, you can stick that on the on the stove. Otherwise, you could just use a cast iron pan um, as long as it's really nicely seasoned and get maybe I don't know. Maybe I do a mix of butter and oil. So I would do probably three tablespoons of butter and three tablespoons of oil. You need kind of a lot of fat in there and get that sort of gently warming over over like medium low heat and take a cup or so of the cooked rice aside and mix in make you kind of make like a little rice and yogurt paste. If you have yogurt, Mm. you could do about, I don't know, one or two tablespoons of yogurt And then you're going to press that yogurty rice into the bottom of the pan. Just spread it using a spatula and that'll become the foundation for your tadig. Then you can put the rest of the cooked rice in over and you use the back of a wooden spoon to poke holes all the way down to the bottom of the pan. And you're going to turn up the heat to sort of medium high. So you want to start hearing a sizzle and see steam coming off. And what those holes do is they let steam escape so that the very bottom of the pan doesn't become soggy so that it becomes Mm. as crispy as possible and for maybe about like i don't know 
five, six, seven, eight minutes, you're just gonna sort of cook that until you start smelling some browning happening and you even start seeing some of the um, rice on the edge of the pan becoming like just lightly golden. And then you're gonna turn the heat down to pretty much as low as it goes. And this is the weird and fun part is um, I cook it in four equal sort of times of about 12 minutes, <laughs> 10 mm. to 12 minutes. And I at, at each sort of... Um, 10 minute mark, 10 to 12 minute mark, I turn the pan a quarter turn. And that's how you're gonna get an even sort of brown because no burner in any kitchen is perfectly even. So this is the way to ensure that you get even browning. And then when you're done, you flip it out onto a cutting board or onto a serving tray and you have this incredibly like crispy, crunchy, nutty, like sort of yummy, 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 crispy rice that every Iranian kid and family fight over <laughs> and and then you get the inside fluffy rice and this is my ultimate comfort food it's so good and um you can eat it with basically anything you have around iranians eat yogurt on everything so i would like a really simple meal would be rice buttery rice with a spoonful of yogurt and a fried egg that's like a simple dinner my mom would make but you can also, you know, turn it into something a little fancy or you could make any sort of saucy meat or saucy vegetable and serve it alongside that. Um, but honestly, I just wouldn't stand there and eat some, <laughs> eat the daddy on my own. <laughs> oh God, crunch, crunch, crunch. That sounds awesome. So Quentin, go make some tadig. Yeah, in Farsi we say Nusha June, which is kind of like our bon appetit. Mm-hmm.